uh, is a bit difficult for all of us, all mm. members of parliament. And I said, Chair, you try and do what you can for mm -hmm. now because the fool that will make a member of parliament feel confident to go to his constituency okay. to contribute to the development of the area is is virtually being withheld by government so mm -hmm. it becomes almost impossible for you to be able to squeeze okay. water out of stone okay uh, to be able to do the things that you otherwise will have done so easily you're uh, talking about a common fund that is only one of it that is only one of it okay but it's, um even as members of parliament mm -hmm. um you're also able to lobby for projects in okay. various ministries departments and agencies and all these people are suffering all these departments and agencies are suffering so it's very almost impossible for mm -hmm. you to be able to get what you easily would have gotten okay. some time ago to be able to answer some of the requests and the problems that will come from your constituents so common fund uh, lobbying for development all that yeah everything is on everything the whole, so, is the whole nation thing? has come at, at to a standstill the whole nation has come to a block nothing is really moving in this country and i said it's difficult for you to be able to knock on any door and seek the sort of help you otherwise will have got it so easily some time ago but you passed the budget and the budget is supposed to be a the budget was empty if, yeah, you pass a budget, that budget. if you pass a budget which basically is dependent on donor funding and also basically uh you're looking at uh, uh revenue to mm -hmm. to to let me say expenditure mm -hmm. uh with variant of almost about 35 billion yeah. then you should know that this budget is hollow it's not achievable it's not a realistic budget but that's sort of budget work that were put before us um that's why we rejected the budget in the first instant and then they decided to pass it there's nothing we could have done okay with the sort of drama that unfolded that day there was nothing we could have done was to come back and fight for it and we came back we fought mm -hmm. but our fight did not yield the dividend we we're looking for okay. uh, we wanted to save Ghanaians the trouble we are facing today we saw that, that budget would not in order to the benefit of the Ghanaian people and wanted to give it a stillbirth but then they didn't agree and they went ahead and approved it we tried we didn't succeed but the fact still remains that that budget is not attainable they cannot get anything out of that budget they cannot get anything no i don't see i don't see any life in that budget and you're seeing the evidence on about two said it right from the day of the presentation of the mm -hmm. budget Honorable and we should talk about that and said there's no hope in that budget for Ghanaians and we are all seeing it it's been close to two months since the budget was approved by their mm. side nothing on the ground nothing is being done mm. nothing well, well you know usually when you raise these issues the first thing they jump to is the is that because you have refused to accept the e-levy well so now that would be very preposterous because the e-levy is just a microcosm of the budget expend uh, the, the, the expected revenue all that you were looking for the year levy was just about seven billion mm. and you have a budget deficit of almost about 35 billion so even when you take out the, if we give them the year levy you, they will still be short of almost about 30 billion where are they going to get that money from unless they borrow and to count on the fact that this is a government that has borrowed more than any other government in the history of this republic history of this country I don't think there's any other country crying in West Africa that has borrowed more than this government mm -hmm. so we wanted to save the future of this country mm -hmm. and so we thought that the year levy was just something they were looking for to use as a guarantee to go and borrow more in fact the growth minister said that on the yes floor. the last time he said in the parliament they saw the sort of uh, he has revealed their secret mm -hmm. he has taken out the cover cloth and so they came out on him and trying to dismiss what he said but this is a road minister who's a member of cabinet yeah. roots has been one of the direct components of the expected out, outcome output of the real levy you understand the real levy is supposed to contribute almost about 20 percent to roads infrastructure so he knows mm -hmm. he knows what the uh, year levy is that's why he himself has been at the forefront campaigning for the passage yeah. of the year levy 
So it will be it will be quite absurd for anyone to say that he didn't know what he was talking about. He's not just a, a, an ordinary minister. He's a rules minister. He's a cousin to the president. So he knows. He sat in cabinet when these issues were discussed. But it was something that they don't want people to talk about because you know Honorable Tufose and Isaac Adongo had already mentioned that the Yilevi was just uh, something like a, a small fish mm -hmm. to go out there and get a big fish. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, they dismissed that when when our people said it. So they didn't want their minister to come and confirm what our people had already said. So it's it's just it's just one of their normal lies. So you're not surprised when he said that at all? No, 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 no. It was expected. Because we knew that one day that thing will come up. If you had not said it, it would have come out just any day from now. Hmm. When finally we pass the year levy, if we pass it, that's what they're going to use it for. Hmm. And that's what we want to prevent. Because they are going to saddle this country and the future of our generation with more debt. And that's why we want to prevent and we'll do everything possible to prevent the passage of the year levy. Mm. I'll come back to Parliament properly. But since you are in the constituency, uh, I'm guessing you are hearing the, the complaints of hardships and difficulties at this time. It's even drumming my ears. And it's made the work of MPs more difficult. Because the more the people face hardship, the more the people become vulnerable the more they put pressure on you, the member of parliament. Okay. MPs are supposed to be legislators. We are supposed to make laws. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to be philanthropists. We are not supposed to take care of people. But then human nature is such that, whether you like it or not, when you are in a privileged position, you have been blessed. And you automatically have to transfer that blessing to others who are not in your position. Mm -hmm. It is just by, by, by grace, by favor, that I'm sitting where I'm sitting. Okay. I could be any, anybody in my constituency. Okay. So when somebody comes to me with a problem, with a request, and I guess that it's really a need, there is no way I will close my eyes or deny that person that request. All that I have to do, if I don't even have, is to use my privileged position to borrow and give to the person. When I am blessed, I go to take care of it. And that has been the character of almost every MP. Okay. I will not dismiss it. It's been the situation from 1992 when we entered into this fourth Republican constitution. Every MP has gone through that. People will come to you with their hospital bills, their school fees, their rent, and all other funerals, outdoor rings, you know, all other sometimes emergencies that you cannot run away from. Let's ask ourselves, as you sit here, I know. Mm. Radio Good has been down for the for years now. You virtually depend on people's magnanimity mm. because Radio Good is not making any money. Mm. I know people call you and ask you for requests. People come come to you with their problems. They don't even know that you don't earn a salary. But because you are you have this name, say that the more you are sitting on radio and talking all the time, people think you are privileged and they come to you. How much more a member of parliament? People go to their pastors. To see, to see to see whether they could get help. They go to teachers, they go to everybody. It's been our social life mm -hmm. since I was a child. I know that the society, all the fingers are not equal. There are some people who are more pro, uh, privileged than others. Okay. And very, most of the time, people who are down mm -hmm. will, will still want to look at people who are ahead of them mm -hmm. to seek help. And that's what has been a social pattern and so it is not surprising that today MPs have become more like fathers and guardians of people than legislators mm -hmm. and so it's I feel bad that when we are disadvantaged when we don't get the support we require it makes the MP very difficult person in his constituency sometimes people come to you you don't have it but when you tell them you don't have it they don't believe you they don't believe you because you cannot go and stand there and tell the whole world right. what you are going through. Yeah. Your problems cannot. Your problems are unto yourself. You cannot broadcast them. 
but they will come to you with their problems and sometimes they will not believe you when you tell them that you don't have so sometimes as an MP, what you can do is to tell the person oh today is not good for me i don't have it now but i promise you when i get it i will let you have it and that is a pattern almost every mp is going through in the parliament today some of the mps are scared even from going to their consequences it's very difficult for them mm. it's not their making it is not their decision but circumstances under nana kufado and baumia has made it possible that they have to go through this ordeal it's a traumatic time for members of parliament it's very difficult yeah. it is not only the minority members who are facing it the majority okay. members are also complaining okay I'm telling you what you are seeing in their various consequences with even police station elections. It's a reflection of high level of discontent, you know, sir, and neglect from their leaders and from their uh, uh, MPs in the various consequences. And they're not the MPs, their fault. Not their fault. They are just being deprived of what they, they, they should have to be able to comfortably and confidently go to their consequences and talk to people hmm. it's very difficult i'm telling you i live in that house and people come to us they complain their own mps come to us they complain some of the agitations we embark upon is quietly supported by people in the majority but they are so scared to come out in the open and talk about it it's getting to a time when i want to see people like uh, the people cast in the mold of former MP PCRP of Ori, for example, mm. to be bold to talk about issues, even in the house. And I've told some of their some of their members who are no more coming back to parliament. A lot of them have expressed their their decision that no, they won't come, to back, come back, not to contest again. A lot of them, and and those people are not ministers. They are not deputy ministers. They are not given any position. And I tell them, do you have a responsibility at this point in time? To talk for the people who are voiceless you are the people who should talk for the voiceless majority in your party you are the people who should join us to critique government in order to put government on its toes and do what is right for the people that's so you're not seeing those dissenting because they, can, they are not courageous yeah, that's that's the issue they, they are not courageous they are not courageous recently i saw one of their former mps uh, former deputy minister for roads mm -hmm. um having gone viral talking about the ills of the government when he was there i've also heard somebody like atacha when he was minister criticizing his own cousin the minister for finance mm -hmm. for depriving him of the funds needed to when he was minister for works and housing mm -hmm. to undertake certain projects under the under the budget mm -hmm. this i was and what did he do he suffered for it mm -hmm. he was thrown out of government mm -hmm. adomi was a fantastic mp Mm. one of the most qualified road engineers we have in Ghana and so virtually he was doing the work at the Ministry of Roads and Highways but he was thrown out in fact government sponsored somebody to take him out from uh, uh, as a member of parliament and and because he's perceived not to like Nanado he is seen as one of President Kufo's boys one of Alan Chamatin's supporters so he came out recently to talk about some of the things that happened under the government. Mm. And you saw how people were virtually, you know, using their funks into his skin. You know, in an attempt to, to shut him down. And that's what is happening. There's so much fear, culture of silence pervade, pervasive in their, in, the, in their camp mm. that they are unable to talk. And that is why people are ready to butcher and kill even at police station elections it's happening all over the country when when you muzzle people for long they express in violence and that's exactly what they are doing i have been saying it that i hope that does not come to the national level okay. because the muslim in this country today the culture of silence being developed in this country today is monumental is unprecedented in the history of our politics in this country okay. for for you to get people like the sir sam jonah ajinasari sam crunchy Ankara, and some people to come out and be talking should tell you 
Recently, I saw another minister of God, a very wonderful friend of mine. He was my mate at Jimpa, Reverend Samuel Mensah, coming out strongly to talk about what is happening in this country. I've heard Prophet Kofi Udru talk about this several times. I've heard Samuel Lamte talk about this several times. Abraham Lamte talk about it several times. People must talk. When you allow people to vent mm -hmm. their anger, vent their frustration, it releases tension. But when you muzzle it, when you cap it, when you keep it in them, it explodes. And that is exactly what we must all pray that didn't happen in Ghana. Hmm. I also wanted to ask you, and going back to the issue of hardship, that you are, this is your third term as an MP. Yes. Uh, you say you usually get this request, but uh, the ones you're getting currently, because it's says traumatic now. Yeah, it is. Uh, more than you've ever seen? More than I've ever gone through. This past two years, what I've suffered, the sort of requests that I've met, the sort of problems I will have to resolve, worse than I've gone through the past eight years as an MP. Wow. Because Things are difficult in Ghana. Things are becoming more and more difficult. Look, the rice that somebody was buying at 65 cities is today almost 210 cities. The meal somebody was buying at 120 cities is today 300 cities. You understand? The bread somebody was buying at 2 cities is 10 cities today. The KK somebody was buying at one city is three cities today. The fish that you would have gotten at two cities is five cities today. So definitely, the demands of the most vulnerable people in our society will be bigger. Their 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 situation, their plight has worsened, mm -hmm. and so they will keep on more putting more pressure on you. More people have lost jobs. And so those people will be added to your existing problems. Mm. So the problems for this country is not only being fed by the downtrodden. It's also being fed by the middle class and by people who are privileged to be working. Because if you're working in your family, if you are the only person working in your family, for example, the pressure from all the members of the family will be on you. Mm. So it is not, we, we, we don't have to look at members of parliament in isolation. It's a general hardship, general difficulties in the country that Ghanaians need to sit down and talk about. Okay. And this, this government is not ready to respond to the needs of the people. It's not ready to respond to the hardships. They continue doing the things they've been doing to compound the situation of every Ghanaian. You don't see government responding to no, the no, hardship? No, no, no. Even it's worse. There's, it's hardship. worse. there's nothing they are doing. Ah, if they are if they are ready to respond to our problems, why would they want to even bring the levy at this point in time? Today, the dollar has broken the eight. Hmm. Petrol is sliding towards ten cities per gallon, and they are not. They don't care. Hmm. They don't care. They are not doing anything about it. All at the moment time when he will come out and, and, and sympathize with the people and tell the people that I understand the situation you are in. I am going to fix it. I'm going to do something about it. I will try and do something about it. No, they don't. They don't care. They are still enjoying their life. Look at the number of people that were taken to Dubai just to go and have fun. Expo, when I was deputy minister for trade, we had Expo in China. The delegation, including Ghana Export Promotion Authority, Ghana Investment Center, uh, National Board for Small Scale Industries, and others. The official delegation, the official delegation that was sponsored by government, we were not more than seven. Not more than not seven. Not more than seven. Even my minister, Aaron Edisu, refused to go. He said, why should he travel all the way to China, waste money, and come back in four days? He didn't want to go. I had to represent him because I had to uh, take part in the discussion on green energy. Okay. He wouldn't have even approved for me to go. Because he said a waste of money. But look at the delegation. At this time. At this time. When Ghanaians are suffering. If we have a president that cares, when people are suffering, he still will want to travel by a, 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 a jet 
a higher debt that will cost the government 14,000 euros an hour. You understand? They don't care. And, and it takes me back to what uh, their own guy said some time ago, Mustafa Habib. He said, one lie to lie, one lie to lie, we have to save this country. Today I'm sitting here and I want to borrow his rephrase. One lie to lie, not rest the Allah. We have to save this country. We have to save this country. If we don't save this country, all of us will perish. Have to save this country. We have to save this country. But when you listen to them, they are convinced that because they are living comfortably. Because they also say that the, the hardship is not only in Ghana. When you go around the world, Nigeria and others, they haven't to respond to uh, increasing prices of fuel. Uh, the, uh, you hear even the Americans complain about inflation and the price of goods are going up. So, so, so let, let me ask you a simple question. Has there been a new evolution in the world? No. That Ghana was separated. You know, Ghana was just created brand new from, 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 from heaven. The Ghana situation was peculiar during Mama's era. Mama's time, there was no global crisis. Mama's time, the situation we are facing today did not exist in the world. Mama time, all those problems were created by Mama and his government. They should give us a break and give Ghanaians some little bit of, let me say, respect mm -hmm. that we are knowledgeable, we are intelligent, we can think through things. Because the problems for which they were insulting us, calling us a bunch of incompetent people, today are three times, ten times, hundred times worse off. And they want to blame it on global occurrences. Well, my mind said Ghana was an island. The whole world was okay, only Ghana was problems. I've just seen a tweet that the Nakufado did in 2016 when the dollar was 3 cities 12 first words and he said the Ghana, do Ghana the dollar is 3 cities 12 cities it's not a result of any world problem but bad leadership today the dollar has broken the 8 it is not bad leadership it was caused by Mama or it was caused by Biden Boris Johnson and the leaders of the world, not Nanado and Baumia and Kenoferata. If Mama's time, three cities, 12 places, was bad as a result of bad leadership, then this one, I would say, is as a result of demonic leadership. Demonic leadership? Yes. You're going to the spiritual realm? Yes. And because, those are quite strong words because, to use in the uh, how, society. Call how? leadership demonic. No, because it is only people who are infested and possessed by demons that can look on as others suffer and they still enjoy. Tell it, me. It is only people who are me, possessed by because demons. Because if the Bible tells me you must have fellow feeling, you must love your neighbor as yourself, and your people are suffering, people who killed, stood in the sun to vote for you are suffering this way and you continually to enjoy you don't look at their suffering you are being, the, you are being possessed it, unless you can tell me that this one is not a demonic possession then I wonder Which because the Bible says he who has no love is dead so if you don't have love for your neighbor you don't care for your neighbor you are almost dead. You, you don't have life in you. You are not a human. And if the person is walking up and, da up and down, and to me spiritually it's not human, it means the person is a demon. Hmm. So you, you don't see that care that governments no, are supposed to show for. Look, if this government has that little bit of care, in Jehovah's time, we care so much about the situation that we were forfeiting our some of part of our percentage of our salaries to buy chips compounds for people. You understand me? We are forfeiting part of our salary to build chips compounds. We have to make sacrifices, huge sacrifices. 
We some of us sometimes travel in a bus. Let me tell you something. I was a minister for one and a half years. I didn't have an official vehicle. Why I was you? using my personal vehicle to work. Because the Ministry of Youth and Sports at that time had no budget to buy a new vehicle. That was the sort of sacrifices we had to make. And I wasn't the only one. So many other ministers in Mama's government had to make sacrifices for the sake of the people to get the work going. We understand. But this is a time when they, they are not only making sacrifices, they are even taking away from the people who are already suffering and deprived. These are people who in the year 2000 sang a song Abba Aka Bachuma were here later and Ben Amechuma were here Nunyam Fe Today it's not only that Nunyam that they have wiped away they have been sucking our spirit from us taking it out. there are so many Ghanaians who now walk on the street lifeless they are walking but they are, there is no life in them you have to honk several times to remind them to bring them back to life otherwise you have to you hit them with your car they walk him, but they are sleepwalkers. Because their life is somewhere else. Because of the immense suffering they are going through. A lot of Ghanaians are going through psychological problems, but you don't see it. As the guns will say, La Chan Chakto, She Chue Wona. The guns will say, If you fit in the pa, if you fit in the pa, if you fit in so many people are suffering, but this, so they keep on with a smile. Last time I was in the church, and when the offering was called, look, it was only my 20 cities that was of different color in the church bowl. And I was one of the last people to put in the offering. It was red, 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 so one one city, so. So I came back and I asked the person who invited me to why? One one city song. He said, even today, because he heard you are coming, that's why some of them are here. It's serious. We the churches are suffering. Because what comes is not able to take care of the sort of development plans and the projects and things we want to embark in the church. So the church instruments go down, they can't even replace the instruments. They can't change their pews. They can't change the rope of choristers. The churches are even suffering because the collection is not coming because the people don't have it in order to give any more. And the means of all that, and you, you have uh, you, you have some uh, you now have developed uh, some stronger relationship with the church. You play a role in yeah. the church. Mm -hmm. And the means of all that, everybody now feels that the church is actually part of those who are pushing to get the e levy pass at this time. It's when it doesn't, when, when it to worsen the case, it's not the church. I won't say the church. You see, what yeah, you say yeah, is the leadership. I, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, I will agree with you. But I wonder whether the moderator of the Presbyterian Church who made that pronouncement really consulted with the members of the Presbyterian Church. My family belongs to the Presbyterian Church. My daughters, my aunties, a good and all of them have said, "Don't pass the year levy." So I wonder where. The monitor of the church got that information from. The leadership is not listening to the members. The leadership is not part of the membership. The leadership of the church itself today, the leadership of the church, has virtually distanced themselves from the feelings of the people. And you see that is they are disconnected. They are disconnected. I'm telling you, they are disconnected. For if only for it's just a few of the churches that the leadership see the difficulties of their people and that's what they talk. Because if you take for example some apostle some country and apostle agenda, for example, the programs he is embarking upon the church social programs are just to ginger up the spirit and the souls of the church members and to keep them going. They are doing soup kitchen, they are doing this for church members, they are doing providing you uh, use clothing for people who don't have do so many social programs and that's why if i attend a church like that i'll be too happy to contribute to pay my tithe 
to pay to to to, to uh, uh, do offering throw money in there mm -hmm. because I know those monies they virtually go to take care of the ordinary people, the vulnerable people in the church. Mm -hmm. They go out there to Abobloshi to a donor to, to take care of people who are there destitutes. Those are the things I want to see the church do. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Jesus Christ came to do. Jesus Christ did not come for the privilege. He came for the have nots, the downtrodden, the suffering, the ordinary people. And that's what I want to see the church. When you have a church where the leadership is so comfortable with themselves and the situation they are in and do not care about the ordinary people who are supposed to be in the church, for whom the church was built, then we have a problem. The missionaries who came to establish the church here in Ghana did not look at the other. That's why they, go to, they went to the rural areas. They, they drank the ordinary water that people were drinking. They, so they decided to, to, to build water systems, build schools, build toilets, build clinics. 90% of all hospitals we have in this country were actually started by missionaries. Almost 70% of all educational institutions we have in this country were actually started by the missionary school, by, by the mission, missions. Some of the best, actually. Some of the best yeah. by the missions. So that was the, what the church was supposed to do. Today we don't see it. And so leadership of churches will sit there comfortable because everything is now okay for them. They are only taking their salaries. And they don't even pay taxes on their salaries. Some of them. You understand? They are driving Porsche cars. So they don't really know what their church members is suffering. That's why they could sit there and come with us, pass the year levy. We shall not pass the year levy today. We shall not pass it tomorrow. If the M majority in parliament can master their numbers, they should come and defeat us. Our 137 is intact. And any day, let the referee put the ball on the ground. We'll be ready. Because we've been warming up for far too long. The sweat on us is just becoming too much. We want the match to get started. Hmm. Well, if you just don't understand, I remember the conversation with John Rabo Nina Tiva Napoy, member of Parliament for the Dodo Dodo, of course. Well, since you are in Parliament on this E-Levy matter, I'm wondering. Because there's no business in Parliament now. Yeah, I, I'm wondering how Parliament feels like now. I, I feel bad in all my time as a member of Parliament. This is the time I feel as an MP. It's a useless thing sitting in the house there. Nothing really because really sit on. there. We don't do anything apart from asking questions. Asking the ministers questions. And sometimes the questions they, the answers they give you are very useless. Useless. The question the and, and the the parliament is such that once all like you sitting here interviewing mm -hmm. me, when I, I give you an answer that you are not comfortable with, you think is I've not answered your question well, you will put further. Mm. But Parliament is a restricted forum yeah. that I'm only entitled to a certain number of questions if I'm the one asking the question. Okay. Three questions, and that's the end. Any other person contributing to it must ask the same question that will be relevant to the question you have asked, mm -hmm. but has only one chance. So if the person gives the minister gives an answer that is even not tenable, then there's no you don't have the opportunity to, to ask him further questions, to prove further. So they come and give any answer and go away. But if we could have the UK system where the minister could be grilled and questions will follow questions, follow four questions, they will come back always prepared. But they come, some of them, let me tell you, there was a time when an answer was given. And then uh, that was the honorable member of parliament for Bolly Boy, Yusuf. He asked the minister. Was this answer written for you, or you went there yourself? He couldn't answer. Because I said, yesterday, I had just come from my constituency. And what you are saying is not true. And the minister said, I will go and check and come back. And that's it. And, and that's it. As to when he's coming back, we don't know. And that's what we are doing now. Because the state of education is in abeyance. Yeah. Yilevi, I told you. And the government has hinged all the reason, the only reason why Narado cannot deliver the state of the nation address is because the whole state of the nation address is virtually hinged on Yilevi. So if the Yilevi is not been passed, there's nothing he's coming to say. And so we're sitting there, taking salary for virtually nothing. 
So nowadays, all you do is urgent questions. We ask questions. We ask minister questions. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then and you ask them. And that's all. There's no government business. There's no government you. business. No projects that you're passing. No, no nothing. No. Just Sometimes they, yesterday they brought some 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 loan agreement and we we threw it away. They now coming all. If you're not careful, by the time we finish this year. Ghana's deck stock will have hit about 400 billion because the loans are still coming. The loan there's one before the yeah. parliamentary finance committee. When they bring a report, we, are sh we shall take it, and that one is almost about another 10 billion or so. So, <laughs> as for the loans, they are compounding it, and that is how that's how you know. Difficult it is when you sit in parliament and you look at all this, you ask yourself, why should I be part of this? Why should I be part of it? But you have no you have no authority because you are a legislator, you are a member of you are supposed to sit there mm -hmm. and either approve or disapprove mm -hmm. that loan agreement. But sometimes what you think about is that ah, this particular loan that they are contracting is supposed to provide roads mm -hmm. for certain people in the area. So you look at the needs for mm -hmm. the road. And then keep quiet and pass it. But then you know that this loan is further going to add to the burden of Ghanaians. So you are caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. Because these people, all that recently, our leader, Honorable Renadu, used to talk about poor work being done on the Tamale interchange. Yeah. Their deputy ranking member, a deputy uh, whip, came to parliament to ask the minister of who's question on the Tamale interchange. The answer the minister gave was just to disabuse what Honorable Aruna Idrisu has said. But truthfully, everybody in Tamale is complaining about the sort of work being, being done. That is shoddy. And if you're not careful and people develop that mentality that a shoddy work has been done, you finish that facility and the people will not use it. Yeah. And that's, that's the sort of situation they should be careful about. So the work that will be zero. Because we'll be, we'll be afraid of. Yes. Up to today, I can tell you there are people who are scared of driving over the circle interchange. Because the propaganda that the MPP spewed out when that interchange was being constructed. That is not being done well, is shaking, is sinking, is this. Because they saw it as too beautiful. To comment so they have to develop negative propaganda against it and i know people who still say that mm -hmm, are you sure this thing is secured we've been using it for years the same contractors who did it are the same people doing obichabi but we are not nation workers like them to go out there and use propaganda against obichabi because we conceptualize obichabi we got a funding for obichabi and it was not only Obechebi, but to change the whole sphere of traffic congestion around the area. What I know was that interchange was even going to open up the road that goes into my constituency, Agobloshi, market. Yeah. So that the trucks and the rest would not compete with the smaller vehicles on the same road. I saw the design and I was just praying that we could execute it during our time. But today, the design has been altered. And what they are doing, I don't see how that thing can ease the congestion in that area. Uh, you're saying well, you cannot do that overpass and overlook Abasokai. Okay. And overlook Abudoshi. What we planned during our time was going to take into account the difficult parking situation in Abasokai, square okay. parts, and also the traffic congestion on the Abudoshi road. Okay. But today it's been altered. You're, you're seeing alterations in the yes, design? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So the, the design you see currently does not even take into account the situation at Abosokai. No. That no, she wrote. No, no. Not touched. No. 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 Ha, have you raised that issue with them? Uh, our ranking member on roads, Honorable Kwame Aboja, has raised it. Okay. Yeah. And you see, that is the same thing they did. With the progressive interchange, if you change the design, and then you come and tell you we have saved money, 
you have not saved any money you virtually change a design and you have gone for an inferior design and what you have done is to make sure that people do not get the value that f we anticipated will not will not come but in the case of obichibi if honorable innocent seen is right who was the rules minister yeah. at the time when the, it was mm -hmm. conceptualized if he's right he's even saying that they are even spending more, more. Yes, on that yes. project, yes. and they anticipated yes. that because, on. as I told you, we are going to add other auxiliaries to it mm. that will ease this the congestion problem within that enclave. You understand mm -hmm. at a particular cost. Okay. So, if you alter the design, you limit the scope, and because of that, the cost comes down at the end of it all. What you have done will be more expensive than what we we'll have got, we we'll have gotten in the first place. Mm. You understand? No. Assuming I'm going to build four-story building at three hundred thousand dollars, okay, and you come and you construct three-story building at two hundred and eighty thousand dollars, you have not saved costs. What you have actually done is to reduce the scope of things and spend more. Spend more. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, let, let me say in Parliament. For for example, okay. let me okay. today. Okay. Today. I was so sad from yesterday evening when I got the news that possibly our World Cup qualifying match could be moved to Benin. In fact, I, I, that's a substantive issue I want to discuss with you, so please don't go there. <laughs> let me say in Parliament with you, yeah. and let me ask you a question. You, you, Tetem MP, when you heard the ruling at the Supreme Court, how did you feel? I felt sad. I Why? felt sad. Sami. The danger, you see, some of us have lived a bit long in this country. Mm -hmm. We've known Ghana for some time. And I can I said it, never in the history of this country have we seen this level of Muslim. Not even under the revolution did we experience this culture of silence, this level of culture of silence, and this level of mutilation of national institutions. Mutilation of national institutions? Yes. This government have clandestinely uh, contrived mm -hmm. to virtually shut the mouth of all institutions that act as a check on the executive. Okay. For example, the decision they have, you know, <laughs> in a way, pushed the Supreme Court to take on the issue of parliament mm -hmm. is also aimed at achieving the same result. That today, the Supreme Court can decide for parliament how parliament should conduct its business. You understand? Yeah. And they will shout you anytime we're talking on the floor, there's an argument in the floor, they goes to court. Because they know they fuck the Supreme Court. So you hear that a lot? A lot. In the house, they do. That's why sometimes we get so infuriated that we want to resolve our problem on the floor of the house and not go to court. Because they know that the court is their last respite. And we know that you will not get any good. But you see, a good judicial system should be what, 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 what you call predictive. It should be predictable. Okay. That say that at any point that any of us know that I have a good case. When I go to court, I will get good judgment. But when the situation is said that people become so, you know, they lose confidence in the judicial system. They are not even too sure that when they have a case and they go to court, they will get judgment. So they will try to resolve the problem their own way. Mm -hmm. As we say in Parliament, the Bulusa way. You understand? Their own way. The Bulusa way. Yes. That's uh, how my good brothers uh, Clement Park and James Agaga call it. You understand? So, that is what we want to avoid. What has happened in Parliament is just a reflection of what the government is trying to do. They've mouthed the media today. All those, I call it, uh, I call it media guys. Some of you call call, call, call them uh, uh, 
the big boys in the media senior journalists senior journalists well none of them is senior to me so yeah, i know i will not call some of them were my students yeah. some of them those people you call senior journalists were my students so they are not senior journalists all of them have a bot there's one funny guy among them who sometimes dress like a a, 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 a what do you call I, I don't know the word i want to use uh, but like a clown he dresses like a clown a scottish clown and always doing touch screen description of things who knows next to nothing about journalism he doesn't know that he's embarrassing himself calling himself a journalist who, who is, are you talking he's possibly about? a broadcaster who are you talking about? I, well i don't even want to mention i won't even credit him with mentioning his name but he's a clown. If you do a clown in this country, you have been using touch screen to describe things, then you know the person I'm referring to. But, 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 uh, uh, honorable, you're a broadcaster yourself. Yes, you, I am. You spend a similar portion of your yes, life as a broadcaster. Yes. To call uh, a, a fellow colleague uh, a clown is going to. I talk about his dressing. I see his dressing. He, he dresses like a Scottish clown. Dresses like a Scottish clown. Yes. I'm describing him, I'm using an adjective. You understand hmm. and he doesn't seem to know that he's embarrassing himself he doesn't care because he's been put on the board somewhere look there's one thing i was taught when i was doing broadcasting mm -hmm. and when i went into professional journalism i remember when i was sent to a training i was told that do not be friends with the people who take authority uh, who take decisions the authorities that take decisions in that way if you are not corrupted physically you'll be bonded spiritually and psychologically if you're not corrupted physically you'll be bonded psychologically and spiritually okay you understand what it means that say now if i become so close mm -hmm. as a journalist as a broadcaster to the executive even when i'm not corrupted physically i become it becomes difficult for me to look them in the face and tell them what they're doing is wrong mm -hmm. because the friendship and the closeness will virtually restrain me from telling it as it is telling truth to power that was the principle under which i was trained as a broadcaster Okay. You understand? So even when I was a commentator, I do not hide it. I say it as it is. Look, I always use this case as an example. Stephen Appiah, for example, will tell you. He was my he was almost my son. There was a day he performed so poorly in a match. I dressed him. The next day he came, he told me that some people told him that uh, but he wants to assure me next time it will not happen again. And truthfully, he became better there on. Okay. As a Kalamu, the same thing I did. Elaborate Williams. All of them were my friends. But I did not I, I did not spare the rod. That was what made me different. And so I have been trained to know that journalism is about painting the exact picture of government and governance to the people. Okay. Reflecting governance, government through the government okay that journalism but would that picture not depend on your own perspective where you're looking at it from yes by your training you should be able to know what is right and what is wrong what is fact what is not fact what is factual and not okay what is right and wrong you have ethics to guide you okay so you are also not going to sit there and paint a negative picture when the outlook is positive, positive okay you're going to be objective and principled as much as possible because that that's a basic ingredient of your profession Okay. that's what you're supposed to have so even when recently I've been, I've been watching CNN my best news and current affairs program on CNN is Erin Bennett okay. in the night this lady was one of the people who criticized Donald Trump a lot today she's doing the same thing with Biden administration she's not saying because she's a democrat okay. cnn 
have been lambasting by the administration on the issue of COVID, and they've been lambasting them, they are they lambasted them on the issue of Af uh, Afghanistan, and they are doing the same with the issue of Ukraine. They are sympathizing with the cause of Ukrainians, but they are also bringing on lapses in the administration's uh, 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 responses to what is happening in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. That is what journalism is supposed to be like. But not to come there and come and stand there and dress like a clown, stand there and when government is doing what is not right, still insult people who are criticizing government for doing what is wrong. And rather be attacking those who are saying and you know telling government that what look for some time now Ivan Spencer for example of joy has always been saying positive things about the government just recently he decided that where things are going is serious so he decided to paint the picture he came to the studio with kinky bread fish and other things to paint the picture the gory picture we have in the country today of the situation of Ghanaians to Ghanaians. And come and see. What is Johnny Hughes not going through? Some journalists have been arrested. They've been prosecuted in court. Bobier, uh, well, Oyinaba, actually came out of. Yes? Yeah. Mugabe. All of them. Oh! For saying, look, what did Bobier say? That has not been said before. If somebody says that the first lady is involved in land grabbing, it's an offense. If the first lady thinks that she's been maligned mm -hmm. or libeled, she should go to court. Take up a civil action against Bobier. Why should it be a criminal offense? When do civil issues become criminal offenses and under, under our laws? I'm not a lawyer. But I sat in a law class for three years. And I know they're going to be civil cases and criminal cases. So what are we talking about here? When did this change? When you have somebody who says he's a lawyer, married to the wife, the first lady, and he couldn't tell the first lady that this case you are going to persecute in court is not of a criminal offense but a civil matter. Do you know how many times Lodina Mama was insulted? When did you hear Lodina Mama asking the police to investigate or arrest somebody? When? The person, the only president in this country who has been insulted more than your mama was also Jerry John Rollins. He was even called Jemakpala. Hmm. You understand? So, because of this, the judiciary is also today being muzzled, being detected to, being told what to write. In fact, they've been said even in some circles that even the judgments are even written for them from the Jubilee House. Well, that's a serious assertion to make. I said it's being said, it's being alleged in some circles. That should tell you the level of confidence of the Ghanaian in the judiciary. And they are the last bastion of hope. Mm. So if they lose that trust, that credibility, that confidence, then Ghana is collapsed. Mm -hmm. Because the media is gone. The security services are gone. You know what is happening in the security services now? I mm. met senior officers in the police service, the army, and the other security. And they tell us that, look, there is no life. The discipline and command and control that we used to have in the services are gone. Now we have also of elements in the service who don't even respect us the commanders. Because they don't take instructions and orders from us the commanders, they take instructions and orders from politicians. Because the commanders themselves are under the thumb of certain politicians. So command and control structures that we used to have in the security services are gone. They've dissipated. They've been mutilated. So now, the officers themselves are even scared to touch some of these people. That's the only... Why should it happen that a whole police commander can come out to a commission and a commission 
even though I'm in charge of this command, I didn't know about any operation. Uh, you're talking about the IRS so where gone. Thank you. I don't know about this operation. Just about a month ago, there was an operation in my constituency. Some people just came and said they, this house belongs to them. They came with police. When we called the regional police commander, he said he wasn't aware of any com uh, this thing like that. He checked and said he would get back to us. When he got back to us, he said they didn't sanction any operation by the police to undertake that exercise. And now we're trying to get the people who were involved and everybody is running away. So you see, some people are misusing the security services for their own selfish, capricious interest. And that is what is killing the discipline in the service. But unfortunately for us, the leadership and the commanders and the hierarchy of the services do not want to talk. They are scared. Look at the embarrassment that has befallen the Ghana Police Service recently. Well, within 24 hours, two different versions of police statements were issued that virtually rather make it the surface and the water of the Ghana Police Service and their image and integrity. A service that has serv integrity, service with integrity as their motto. Today, it's gone. How come that we have situations where policemen will be involved in armed robbery and kill other policemen, celebrate at their funerals, and then today, when they are arrested and they are having investigation, they mysteriously get killed at another operation. Is this a Chinese film or an Indian film? That you can see this. It's, I used to see this in uh, Chinese films where we call people Chinese lapor. They come and deceive you, take you to somewhere, and get you into a trap, and get eliminated. That's what we are seeing in the police service. And and when you sit back and you've you've known where we have come from as a country, you get scared. You get scared. And that's why I'm saying I'm repeating what Mustafa Hamid said. One lie to lie. You see my hand up. Mm -hmm. One lie to lie. We should save this country. We have to save this country. Save this country for the future of our children and our children's children. It's not, it's not me. Sena, it's not you. It's not President Mama. It's not NDC. Every Ghanaian who is concerned about the future of this country should get up and let us save this country. Because now the Supreme Court says the first deputy speaker, the second deputy speaker, when they are sitting and presiding, they can partake in the voting. The Supreme Court should come and effect that judgment in Parliament. The Supreme Court should come and effect. Yes, they should come. Ah, if you go to court and you get a judgment. You got, got, got if the judgment is being affected, you just go and get a mandamus. They should come. One, they, they cannot enter the chamber because they will be strangers. And two, I can give you one assurance: we shall not sit down and allow somebody to be part of the nation and also be part of the voting. It will not happen. It's against parliamentary parties, and we shall not allow it. But that's against the decision of the Supreme Court, Which the highest decision? court of the land. No, look at the last part of the judgment. Read the last part of the judgment. He said Parliament should go and do set up their own these things to make sure that they they, they comply with this through their own structures. So through our own structures, we shall we shall we shall take decisions that too. Then your stance is. That if, cannot be allowed. If the speaker want to vote, mm -hmm. if the first and second deputy speakers want to vote, they should first remove the cloak of first and second deputy speakers and be voting as members of parliament for Bekwai and Formina. That's the only basis. That's the only, the only time yes, we'll be yes, allowed to vote. Yes. Voting as members of parliament. Yes. Or we can bring somebody else to preside, but they will not preside. 
and vote. The Supreme Court says that is their, their vote as members of parliament that has been taken away for them. Okay. The vote as members representing the people of Bakwa and Formula that, that they are protecting. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to voting, someone else will preside. So they will be members of Bakwa and Formula. They will be members of the parliament for Bakwa and Formula. They will not preside and still vote. How would that work? Well, how would that work? When there's the first deputy, the speaker should come case. and tell us. They should come and tell us how it will work. You see, let me tell you, nobody, nobody in this country is going to rebel against the decision of Almighty God to create the sort of structure we have today. God, in his own infinite wisdom, has created the structure we have today for the purpose of the good of Ghana and not for the purpose of the good of the president or the Supreme Court. So nobody can sit anywhere and decide to undo what God has done. We shall not allow that to happen. Are you against it because it's not practicable? It is not practicable. It's inconsistent with our practices. To me, it's on illogical and it's unheard of. Let's even go to our traditional setup. Okay. When have you seen a situation where in our traditional homes, in the chief's palace, a decision is to be made and the chief himself has taken part in the vote? The chief will always get his counselors to go and meet and bring a decision. Namoko Emosi saying, if the judge in the case is competent enough to use his own judgment in every case, there won't be the need for jury. Do you get me? Yeah. When a jury has come, the judge even asks the jury, have you got to a decision? Have you come to a decision? And in all cases, the next one decision is unanimous. So, nobody should think that they can undo, you know, recreate what God has created in this country today. 137, 137 with one independent is the work of God it's not the work of any man and we shall allow any man to undo what God has done but I, I've always wondered because uh, even in this parliament in, 2000, in 2021 the budget was passed Yeah, the budget was passed mm -hmm. um, you passed several businesses or yes. government yes Yes, by consensus. Yes. In fact, your side was murdered because yes. you, you actually voted and approved some ministers, 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 ministers of the government. In fact, we approved some of the Supreme Court judges. Well, what is the problem? And some of them, today I'm saying it, I'm a member of the appointment committee. Some of them were virtually begging us to approve them. Begging you? Yes. Judges begging you? Ah. <laughs> I, are you today, the same parliament you are telling us that we're so stupid to have approved you. But don't worry, they will come again. This is not going to be the end of the parliament. They will come again. Yeah, and, and so I'm asking, uh, what is the challenge now? The why, challenge, why is it that the, the same parliament that, that was able to build consensus the challenge is, now is that the government want to have his way want to muzzle parliament and that will not happen they are not seeking to build consensus no don't you agree no. on the way because they've never been honest in all decisions that we have come to consensus they've never been from the beginning of this parliament they've never been honest so you are departing from that because you find them we are not going to play by the rules if we're ready to accommodate you a little bit mm -hmm to get government business going and government want to use that opportunity to muzzle us to trample over us then we assert our authority and that's exactly what we are doing we assert our position 
as a very responsible minority approve what is right and disapprove what is wrong and they, they, in that situation clearly to to make it difficult for government business to now work up if you think that you can use fair or foul means to reduce our numbers in parliament so you can get your things passed easily we shall also continue to frustrate you because we shall allow that to happen how can this be resolved because I, i'm wondering because now there's a deadlock it can only there. be resolved when they th start thinking and use their brain instead of their brawn use brains instead of brawn you see that's what they are using now yes if you want to bulldoze your way <laughs> you, you cannot have it because we're not kids when you look at the composition of parliament we have more experienced hands on our side than them so they should rather build consensus they should always try and sit and talk because we are equal but when you think that you can always bully us you see they are still living in the life of michael Cole's parliament that parliament is dead and gone parliament our 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 rules and our religion says that every parliament is a new creature okay so if you think that you are still living in that parliament where you have absolute majority and you have a speaker who was more of a party chairman than a speaker of parliament mm -hmm. and so you could do things your way it's not the same to me we have a different architecture altogether so what you should do is to adapt to the new system work more on consensus building than bulldozing intimidation and coercion that will not work that will not work because who are you going to bulldoze who are you going to intimidate Aurel Adrisu Aveji Muntaka Ahmed Bahim Doyo Gansa or Nelan Tevandapoy who you can't you can't two the parliament that chairman Sabosu was even instructing and controlling the speaker it's not a parliament today He, can, he, he won't have that privilege of making turning parliament into an extension of his Swami constituency. It will not happen. So they better think and build consensus. There are some of them, let me say this, there are some of them who have seen the light and they always pandering to our side talking to our side engaging with our side is that the leadership or those are individual members especially the ministers let me say let me say for once let mm -hmm. me say as well as the ministers i can say many of their ministers for example um and the minister of uh, uh, energy for example napo the minister of transport um uh, even even how i come see today is a much more reformed person than before she, she comes over time to have she a spends time to have a conversation with our mem members especially those of us who are from the coastal line for seriously for example last time we engaged in me sam george others uh uh, 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 uh we engaged seriously on the issue of premix and she assured us that she's going to take a, a time and see to correct some of the concerns we raised some time ago she wouldn't come she wouldn't come because she could dismiss us and think that she's a minister of, of uh, what uh, development initiatives or something. Yeah. But today, she wants to engage more. She even promised she will go with us to our various constituents to see in practice really how this premise is going. And that's what we want to see. But we're not seeing that from leadership in the house. We're not seeing that from the leadership of the house. In the majority and majority. Yes, side. and also seeing that with some other ministers. Okay. We wish that all the ministers will be engaged with us will be engaging with our members like the way these few others are doing as i've mentioned i really like didn't mention the finance minister because the, currently the biggest issue before you that's making it difficult for any substantive work to be done with the economy false right in his domain have you said after after we've rejected the attempt to push the yield of it through they started the, this so-called town hall consultancy mm. consult, co consultation she are doing 
they tried with us twice we met in parliament to look at this thing initially when they started we thought that this engagement should have come before even attempt to <laughs> to to, to even initiate any action on the E-Levy. Mm -hmm. So, we left it go, and then we started with the engagement. But we could see that you can't, you, you can't be engaging from an intransigent position. You are coming to a table with all your pre predetermined uh, you know, result. Mm -hmm. And so, whatever the opponent says, you are just listening to him, but this is where I stand. If that is the premise upon which you are coming for any engagement, it will not work. Okay. Because the law of equity says it. So he sees before you and tries to detect what it should be. Now, you see, without opening all up. that he's saying, you can see his predetermined mind. So he's giving you the chance to speak and to say what you want to say. But I don't know, he's telling you what he wants to do. Oh, okay. So and that's even what, that's like what they're doing around. That's even what, if you look at what is happening in the various town hall meetings, it is not to listen to the people and to take to come to a certain conclusion it's just telling the people this is what we want this, to do. this is what we want to do these are the reasons why we want to do trying to justify why the people should approve of the year levy but not to listen to the people mm -hmm. on their abhorrence of the of the year levy mm -hmm. that is what should have been the case you can't go and lecture people and ask a few people to ask questions some of those questions which have been planted by yourselves and you think you can get a, a good uh, conclusions no in that case you are actually listening to yourself and not really taking any action hmm. well uh, let me let me just go through a few of the messages but somebody just said the story you just told me about what happened in parliament yesterday mm -hmm. Uh, on the loan agreement actually there's the Ghana web is reporting okay it's from starfm.com they source it there the minority it says um, a minority shoes down loan approval over supreme court trailing and it says minority leader have no idea so has the approval of 38 billion euros loan agreement between Ghana and Deutsche Bank of Frankfurt for construction of 40 bed district hospitals in three constituencies the loan facility was to see the construction of 40 bed hospitals in Ayenswano, Efidiasi, and Ofenso, as well as the completion and equipping of old Tafo maternity and Kumasi South maternity blocks. The Tamale South MPI have cited a Supreme Court judgment on the difference between quorum for commencement of business and quorum for decision making. The move is to arrest a motion moved by Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma for rescission of a loan facility with the Czech Republic approved in November 2020 for the same projects. The move was to make way for approval of a new loan agreement for the project. I don't know, so have argued the House did not have the required numbers for decision to be taken based on the interpretation of Article 102 and 104 by the Supreme Court, which gave Deputy Speaker's voting rights. The development led to the shelving of both the motion and a new loan facility. Quote, Mr. Speaker, we are all in this country. The Supreme Court has ruled and provided a dichotomy between debating quorum for a or, or a decision quorum and voting quorum in person to Article 102 and 104 of the Constitution. Looking at the composition of Parliament, Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure we will be in, uh, um, um, we will be in contempt of the Supreme Court if we proceed to put a question when we do not have a voting quorum. As it is required in Article 104 and ruling on the judges of the Supreme Court, we are no longer masters of our procedures by that ruling. So which means that, because I realized in, in the past, mm -hmm. we will have let this go. Yeah, because, because I you voted with less. Yes, yes, we will have let this go. But because in, in, in the what has happened, we have decided that, well, if that's what they want, we play the music that way for them. So it means that now when you go to parliament, yes, if you for don't every decision, if you do not have a quorum, won't a take quorum that qualifies under Article 102, there yes. will be no business. There's no business. A quorum that qualifies under 104, there will be no voting. voting. Yes. That will make it difficult for Parliament to take a step. Is that what they want? We are playing the music the way they want to dance it. That's what I'm saying that those ministers who are engaging are doing the right thing. Let me take, for example, Samu Abujinapo. Look, in all instances, I would say, when this issue of Garlands cropped mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. 
He called me. We had a discussion. For example, La Lands, I've told him what to do. I've told him what to do about Nungwa Lands. I've told him what to do about Tuba Lands. And all these are people who know that look, we have brothers, we have friends here who have been in government before. And they may have knowledge about what is happening. So let me consult with them. But parliament as a body and government as an institution think that they can do without us. Okay. So if that's what they want, they should go ahead. We'll look at them. Hmm. Well, let me do a few of the messages because I have uh, two other things I just like to raise with you. We haven't even gone to the sports matter because you can't come here and leave without <laughs> addressing that issue. Uh, and also, you are the ranking member of the local government. Uh, Committee yeah. of Parliament. So I'll uh, 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 just a few issues on that. Uh, question in the UK says, "Morning, and I tell him NDC Minority Caucus should constantly brief Ghanaians on the state of Parliament business on the state of Ghana. The issue of loans is worrisome. NDC Caucus should start setting records straight with Ghanaians, please. Ghana is at crossroads, uh, big time. That is coming from Kwesi in the UK. There are a few more. A man of the suit says, but if the economic difficulty is global." The one is why is it that the Ghanaian currency is performing this badly against the dollar, euro, and all other currencies? So he is saying that if the if it is bad everywhere, then okay, I think Jet uh, deleted his own. There's a okay, this one which says the road minister knew what he was saying, that is why he quickly announced the closure of toll boots. Um, so there's a okay, so let me do a few more here. Some of them says Ibrahim Washara says we know it's Paul Adomotri. Uh, is that the person? I don't mention the name. Okay, because that's what they are saying. But maybe the spirit uh, is revealing unto him. Uh, Sama even says I stop pretending. And uh, that he <laughs> said. Busi <laughs> <laughs> says the majority of so-called senior journalists are MPP media defense ministers. He say famous Sima says Christmas tree board chairman. So a lot of people are providing much more flesh to what you said. Um, there's a pure Ghana. There's a Senna. You don't know. Okay, I think they are also in the Christmas tree, man. The people is providing. They are providing more details. Um, there's a Orlando Yabua who says the post Christmas tree. Wow, well, still can't think far. Uh, Brian Mashawa says the, the journalists in Ghana are rotten by a few bad apples. Orlando Yabua says good morning. My honourable Neil and Tevan Dapoy, much love. Uh, Samura again says. Okay, I think uh, so far Nsako says uh, good morning to us. We are all in Ghana when changes came after 2024. Those that are mute, uh, if they decide to talk, they will smell. Okay, he's saying those who are quiet now should stay quiet. Tim, Tom, <laughs> Tim Tommy says we can go quiet. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I was shy again, says we can has never come out to defend Lordina Mahama today. Uh, she is she is running to the police to arrest Bobie. Orlando Yabua is saying if professionals are quiet today, I advise they should remain so when power changes to NEC government. Else, uh, Samara again says I see North MP case today will determine whether Ilevi will be passed or not. Ibrahim again says uh, okay. Uh, he says okay. He says Rebecca is more dangerous than the Supreme Court president. There's uh, Orlando Yabua who says Team Radio Good. I learnt. There's Wahala in MPP, Bibiani environment, kindly follow up. Papa Yao says Ghanaians have been quiet for far too long. Why light off at the airport? Because things were being smuggled into the country. Actually, they said they owe the electricity, the electricity company of Ghana. There's uh, Salim Aminu, uh, who just says honorable, uh, Margaret Ago Sampa Tamaklo says, Ni, you have made my day. God richly bless you. You see, Rabaka Seni, is, uh, Seni is also joining us. Uh, says a good morning, please. Ghana is gone under uh, the MPP, Kufuado government. All institutions are no more functioning. They have put all vigilantes everywhere in the system. May God save uh, us. Language United says practical sense at play. There's also uh, Muru Mohammed who says you are a man of courage. Osman Lachi was watching us. There's you see Rabaka saying that the MPP won't, won't turn Ghana into a one party state. Um, there's a uh, Mohammed Senekimi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Eric, uh, is it Kufualo? Who says, why are you guys surprised? The Supreme Court and the Nanado has always been unanimous in every decision. Seven nil. So they expect every state institution in Ghana to toe the same line. Ghana is doomed. 
uh, there's some Salim Amino who also says honorable you made my day Langi says Nanado the so called president of Ghana you see your spoon then levels never accept people who beg for a post they stab you in the back uh, King Jaja says uh, good morning to us my dear friend uh, okay says hello good morning my dear friend you are doing a good job God bless you uh, Kwame Malike says okay so we're not on satellite TV uh, there's a big band uh, joining us Sena, can you ask him honorable if the president does not come to parliament and address state of the nation by the end of 31st March, what happens? Is it a contempt to parliament and the constitution? Is there a time frame within which he's supposed to do that? Yes, there is a time frame. And I'm very sure that uh, we may activate mm -hmm. that clause when the time is up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am getting, I'm getting confident that possibly next week he will do the needful yeah the president will do the needful i, I uh, think you find, so you find out on friday whether that will happen or not yes on friday when we know the now. business is yeah. will tell us whether the e levy will be okay yeah i'm th mark me as soon as the e levy issue is settled the president will come with the state of the nation address but this all depends on you yes. believe that it all depends all on all that is coming to say for example is hinge on you levy. levy yes because if you look at the three sectors for which they virtually uh earmark the year levy mm -hmm. those are the sectors that the president is going to talk on because all the other sectors that they've made so much noise about mm -hmm. where they develop slogans the sloganering and all those things have fallen into uh, the waters they've virtually gone dark and I said she cannot. Plenty for food and jobs is collapsed. You understand? Mm -hmm. Afforestation program is gone. Free SHS is true with problems. Our educational sector today mm -hmm. is the worst we have seen. Our students are suffering. Okay. Parents have become discontent and very, let me say, uh, they, don't, they don't know what to do. They, 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 they have become gone on the days where my mother and my father could predict when I'm going to school, when I'm coming home. They know what I'm doing in school, what I'm not doing in school. Today, the parents cannot. I am a parent. I do not even know the school calendar of my ward. Because they could be sent home at any time. Mm -hmm. And they'll be asked to report at any time. In fact, they could go to school and then within three days ask to come home. You don't know. So, the, 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 let me say, you, you cannot really have a plan for education okay two years now since the new educational system was evolved they don't even have textbooks okay so the teachers are just teaching anything the problem cannot be solved every time they are making promises mm -hmm. and we have an educational minister who comes to talk to us about educational structure in america People bring their children to go to school here at a basic level. They bring their children here and then at a tertiary level they take them outside. You can't tell me that the American educational system has the same characteristics as the Ghanaian educational system. And so you want to impose the American system on us. Okay. It's useless to do that because our cultures are different. Our systems are different. Our economy is different. Our level of this thing is understanding is different you can't he's messed up our education this minister of education who claims to be the best person Akufuado could find on the planet he said it that is your Akufuado who begged him to come down and help restructure education is the worst educational minister i've seen in my life this worst is the worst in this country i've seen, look Education is one ministry that has been blessed with wonderful people. I'm telling you, education in this country, the late Harry Sawyer, Betty Moridwisu, uh, Professor Jamba. Look, I can mention the names. Recently, Professor Jena Nopukwajiman. I can mention Dr. Mohammed Ibn Chamba, uh, Ibn Abdallah. After, people who have had the education in this country, this man is the worst. But I'm not surprised because it is so with 70% of all the president's appointees. They are the worst performance if you do analysis of the ministries that mm. we've had minister since the time of Nkrumah. Mm. 
They're the worst. But they are the ones who make loud the, 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 the loudest of noise and, and you know trumpets themselves. But they are empty. But just a few of them, I can mention a few who I can, I can give some little bit of, let me say, credit to. Because I can measure their inputs and also their output, what they say before us and what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But the rest, majority of them are waste pipes, square pegs in round holes. And the president, I wonder why the president is almost six years in office. He has virtually used the same team not made reshuffle to bring there are people outside his current team who are better than those who are playing and he's not making substitutions i'm telling you because somebody will ask why is this rules minister still there why is this education minister still there education minister what is he, he's not done anything what has he done what has he achieved uh, they will tell you free SHS. Free SHS? Yes. Well, he didn't start a free SHS, so I'll forgive him. But I'll tell you, free SHS is good. We planned it. We had a program for it. And we're going slowly according to the program. Because education is not something you can just push down the truth of people. You must first. Look, far, far back as our champion's time, we started with the school experimental system. Rollins time. We started with a day secondary system. You understand? Kufo tried to think out with it. And every, every time you've had pilot and you've had trials. Mm -hmm. But this one, he treated the school trailer like guinea pigs. Just put them through. And then whatever happens, happens. And no on it. Look at what we are going through today. Look at what we are going through. So it is something that we need critically to sit down and say, look, if things are not going well, like Mesa Ottawa said, let's change the captains of the ship so that we all don't sink. You think it's time here at least? That's some level of reshuffle significantly. It's very important. You see, when you do that, it brings a little bit of confidence into the people that maybe these people will do new things. Why is his cousin still the Minister of Finance? I don't know. Of all this mess. In fact, if the president has the power to reach out for the first person he should reach out for is vice president. Vice president. Yes. The vice president cannot be reached out, can he? The man who said he has the magic wand to arrest the dollar and keep our city to dollar rate at a very comfortable distance today has moved from doctor economy to doctor digitization. And that one too, we are not seeing top. Because somebody who sat in the studio and said there is no way as a vice president and chairman of the economic management team of, the, of, of this government said, year levy is not possible. Mm -hmm. And Momo and money transfer will not be taxed. If today your own government has introduced it, then you don't have any respect among your members. You don't have any respect to them. You don't have any dignity in government. You are not respected in government. So you should be reshuffled. But we, we understand he's making a bid to be president. And uh, uh, in fact, when he becomes president, he's not respected by his own people. Uh, perhaps when he becomes president, he can have absolute control and oh, how? things. Well, how? How? You could not be a Ayankwa or Henina with me. Well, let because me. you see, as a vice president, I'm, I'm very serious about this. Okay. I've said it before. If I am the vice president, chairman of the economic management team and I said Momo should not be taxed and today my minister of finance and my government is, um, is making every attempt to tax Momo I either resign or I come out to say I don't agree okay. I've seen so many vice presidents disagree with their presidents it happened in Kenya it happened in Tanzania. It happened in Zambia. It has even happened in Ghana before. Vice President Akar disagreed with President Rollins. Vi Vice President Dick Johnson disagreed with President Yola Liman. 
And I'm sure many times Vice President Atanas disagreed with Jerry Rodriguez Wallace. So, it has happened. Why don't Baumia come out and tell the whole Ghana that I still stand by my words that Momo should not be taxed, money transfer should not be taxed? And I disagree with my president and his cousin. Would that not be disastrous, judging from the fact that is the is the only solution that has been put out by the government that's that that makes you a principled person. That makes you a honest person. That makes you a man. And if he's not be able to do that, there is dishonest. He's not principled. He's not a man. What if that principle includes not putting what you think above that of? The, 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 the interest of the government resign it's done everywhere so Where resign. Are people who are serving in the government and the government decision did not agree with the resign you think he no, has to recently, resign recently in UK two years ago mm -hmm. a minister of our transport was late to parliament to answer questions for five minutes he has to resign his position in India the Minister of Transport, the, the Minister of Railways, was not a driver of a railway of a train, was not the manager of the railway service. There was a derailment of a railway, uh, of, a tr of trains on a railway track. He resigned. I've seen situations where in UK, electricity has gone off in certain areas. Of London, it has caused the job of a minister, of a secretary. Quite recently, just for somebody being accused of sexual harassment, a whole governor, one of the people who was being touted as the next president of the United States of America, has to resign. In fact, he alone did not resign. It even caused the job of his brother on CNN, Kobo. Mm. So if we have a vice president who disagrees with the policy direction of his government, he sits sitting there, and not that he cannot do he he has even become deaf and dumb. Please, then why is, why is his business sitting there as vice president? What is business sitting as the chairman of the economic management team? Does it mean that the Minister of Finance and the others are more knowledgeable in terms of the economy than him? So all those times, when he was organizing all those lectures around the country, and said he's an economic risk kid, it was Hanya. Hmm. It was a concert party. We must be serious about things. We must be. I've seen situation in Ghana here where a minister under Jomama's government said, I'm going to do this at this time. He missed the date by a month. He resigned. Dr. Cobra Donko. Yeah, on the power issue. On the power issue. He resigned. That is principle. That's a mark of respect for somebody who calls himself a man. Well, let me read a few more of the messages to you uh, because uh, some of them require some responses. Uh, can McLean Erickson says, Senator, please can meet Honorable Van, Van der Poy that they should never ever accept any ruling from the Supreme Court in regards to the Asin North MP. The man must be in Parliament to represent his people like the way Joseph Oseusu is hell bent on representing his people through illegal voting. Uh, there's also uh, some more. Oh, but you know, let me, you know so let me respond to this. You see, when you have a Supreme Court, mm -hmm. which will be more concerned about removing somebody who has been duly elected by a people, but do not care about some people not having a representation in Parliament for two years, then we have a problem. Has the Supreme Court taught about the people of South? Central Cook, we have a perfect yes. ability. Have they taught about the people? Somebody is a chief from that area and it's on the Supreme Court. Has it bothered him to raise the issue with the court? But you're happy thinking about how to remove somebody who has been elected by people to represent them. 
I was going to say the matter did not appear before them, but it actually did in a certain yes. manner. Yes. But but what if they feel that the matter had, because if what was brought before them was not a matter for them to pronounce on, uh, then why did they pronounce judgment? I think the, the judgment was limited. They were supposed to do uh, a sexual right. That's all they did. Uh huh. And what did they say? Oh, they, it, it was about. I think it was about that. Meru. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. My point is that, as a Ghanaian, if somebody is concerned about somebody representing people, that the person should be concerned about somebody not having some somebody to represent them. If you are concerned, so concerned about somebody representing people he wasn't qualified to represent, be equally concerned about people who are not having somebody at all to represent them. Like I'm saying, the Supreme Court only deals with matters that come before them. That's what I'm saying. Are they not Ghanaians? Are they saying that thing is not of public interest? But they are the Supreme they, Court they cannot start are the, the, are the judges of the themselves? Supreme Court isolated from thinking about the problems in this country? No, but they cannot start the case by themselves. They might operate within the constitutional That's what I'm power saying that they should, be, to them. they should be concerned. Okay. They should be concerned. Okay. Okay. Let me read a they few. They talk. Okay. They, don't they talk to people? Yes. Yeah, really. general, don't they talk to him all the time? That doesn't come to them. Though. He's not the one who filed the case for them. He's not the one who filed the case in front of them. What did they tell him? Did they, that day, as soon as he left the Supreme Court, he ran to Parliament to answer a question on Sal. We should we should be careful what we're doing in this country. Because this country has gone through a lot mm. to be where we are today. And those of us who have lived through those ages, we are so happy where we have gotten to. Mm. And we are so determined to protect where God has brought us. We are so concerned protecting what we have. Because there was a time when all around us was fire. But we had rain. There was a time when all around us were plagues, diseases, but we had health. It was not by accident. It was only by the favor and the grace of God. Hmm. Let me... So, Samuel, Maswa Minta just says, greet my boss for me. Honorable Neil and Devandapoy. Maswa send that from Belgium. Abdul Kadir Karim Haruna also joins us from Saudi Arabia. Uh, he is asking what is going to happen to the e levy. Like Honorable said, they are yet to bring it properly before Parliament again. Abdul Basit, Abdullah, he said this government is suffering from political constipation. They have nothing to offer Ghanaians because they are embodiment of uh, is it cartoons, cracks, and jokes in Ghana. Uh, Maso again says, okay, uh, Joshua Bafo is saying, can you ask Honorable for us about the Chipman courts and Takwa court cases? Okay, I I think I don't know if he has any because those are uh, what do you call it uh, um, the petitions, petitions yeah. election petitions yeah. that I think are handled at a party level. Um, but uh, do, 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 do you get briefed on progress of cases as members of parliament? Uh, not quite frequently, okay. you know, but the structures demand that this is a party issue, okay? So, unless the members amongst us who represent on neck and fake, okay. Uh, it is not something that you always, but for our own concern, we, we do monitor. To, yeah, okay. we try to uh, get through, filter through the information that comes from there, and we are concerned. General Sidon Keta, for example, will always brief you mm. on what is happening on the Tejiman South issue. Mm. Well, uh, let, let, me, let me now uh, uh, maybe question because I, I realize uh, your um, your colleague uh, from San Diego. I like the idea of saying has yeah. always talked about the issue with common well, the common fund, uh, the digital assembly's common fund. Yes. And the fact that he's been delaying sometimes, the last time he said it, uh, he was talking about three months to, f uh, no, actually three quarters to four quarters delay of the common fund. Has, has the situation changed at all? Because we're just talking about. Not uh, uh, no, not no. Not not and, and it's sad. It's one of the issues I'm talking about here that this country is collapsing slowly. Mm. Um, if 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 we are not yet at the intensive care unit, then I don't know when we are going there. Intensive care unit. Yes, the, as a country, um, the district assemblies 
are being collapsed. It's a pity, it's, it's sad for me to say this, that possibly my best friend in politics mm -hmm. is the Minister of Local Government today. And I feel sad for him that under his tenure, his government is doing this to the district local governance system. Okay. And sometimes I read his frustration. Mm. Just yesterday, I had time with him, and, and I could see that he could not open up to tell me how his feelings are, but I could judge from the, the, the little, little information and the, the things he was saying that he's frustrated. Local governance under this government is dead. Okay. Because, you see, you cannot decentralize functions without fiscal decentralization. Okay. Already, the fiscal decentralization we are having is not commensurate with the functions that have been dissolved to the local assemblies. And the little that they are supposed to get mm. in order to make those functions functionable is not coming under this government. Initially, the government decided to cap it. Then, the minority went to court. We were represented by Honorable Benjamin Kudu and Honorable Karit Kwashiga okay. with Honorable Dominic Ayine as their counsel. We went to the Supreme Court and were able to argue our case out and get the Supreme Court to declare the capping of the District Assembly Common Fund unconstitutional. Okay. You understand? We came back and up to today, we've been demanding full accountability as far as the releases to the District Assembly Common Fund is concerned. We don't get it. The last time we were in Parliament, mm -hmm. the Right Honourable Speaker ruled that the local government committee, the finance committee, the Ministry of Finance and the Duty Assembly Common Fund, we should meet and reconcile the figures. Mm -hmm. Because the Deputy Minister of Finance, Abna, was disputing the figures that we, the local government rank uh, committee, I and my Deputy uh, Honourable Benjamin Akodo, brought out Mm -hmm. as the amount they are owing the District Assembly Common Fund. Okay. In fact, as at that time, they, they were owing the District Common Fund almost 2.1 billion Ghana cities. And she was disputing. So the Speaker ruled that we should meet and reconcile the figures. We've done that on our own. They are not ready. They have never met us up to today. The okay. Minister of Finance have refused to meet us up to today. We have done our this thing. They are still owing that amount of money. The only thing they have done is that the last time some releases were made to the assemblies, they asked the common fund administrator to go and borrow two billion from the bank. We we gave two billion guarantees yes, from the bank. Yes, they gave her a suffering guarantee to borrow from the bank. So she borrowed that money to take care of the so that reduced the figure from two point one to one point eight. As we're talking today. They are still owning the assemblies almost 1.7 billion. 1.7 billion? Yes. Which almost go through a whole year. Okay. Yes. It's three quarters and a half. That is owed to the assemblies. Yes. As we speak currently. As we speak currently. So, even for the first quarter of this year, nothing, nothing is paid. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. For the whole 2021, only one quarter was paid. First quarter? There only is one quarter. Nothing was paid the whole 2021 to the assemblies. How do you expect assemblies to function? This morning I heard somebody who has been appointed as an advisor on local governance. Somebody who was a DC for only four years. An advisor on local. I wonder how this boy can advise Dambuche on local governance. Advisor on local governance? Yes. That's new to me. Yes. And there's some appointment, some boy from Okuyapin North. He was a DC in Okuyapin North. I saw him tell you, justifying why if even that this assembly common fund has not been paid to the assemblies, it doesn't matter because they still have other sources of revenue. And he mentioned IGF, I laughed. He mentioned DPAT and I laughed. I said, this boy, how can this person be an advisor on local governance? The truth of the matter is that the assemblies are being strangulated. They're being deprived of resources. This one is a statutory fund. The law says that not less than 5% of total government revenue. Mm -hmm. Already the government is cheating Ghanaians. Already the government is stealing from the people. Okay. Because, let me tell you this. 
Total revenue means all receipts from mineral resources, from cocoa. Okay. And then all revenue derived from taxes. Okay. So you from the oil or put together. Oil, everything. Calculated. Today, as I'm talking to you, the cocoa board goes to take 1.5 billion syndicated loan for cocoa purchases. Mm -hmm. It means that when they sell the cocoa immediately, they pay that 1.5 billion. Okay. But that 1.5 billion, 5% of that money should have gone to this assembly's common fund. Because it's revenue to government. It's a cocoa that we sold. Mm -hmm. And cocoa receipts is supposed to be part of the five of the total revenue. But they don't add it. So it means that five percent of the one point five billion dollars that they've gone to take, we should come to this assembly's common fund. They don't. They've collateralized some of our cocoa receipts. They've collateralized some of our bauxite revenue and other mineral revenues they collateralize them. Two, the oil, before they even calculate what they're supposed to come to government, they shelve off some, which goes to GMPC development, which goes to this, which goes to this. Meanwhile, all those ones are supposed to be part of the receipts. So 5% of that is supposed to be added to the amount of money they should pay to this assembly's common fund. They don't. So what they are actually giving us it's only 5% of tax revenue. Okay. Not total revenue. Not total revenue. Okay. And even that one, it's not coming. So already, they are depriving the district assemblies of the real amount of money they are supposed to get for development. That's why my constituency, all the projects started under Oko Van der Poy for educational infrastructure, Installed. We cannot continue to pay. We cannot control our little cluster of schools. We cannot continue Independence Avenue because the AMA, the man of money that is supposed to come to AMA for them, they are not getting it. They are not getting it. Okay. This is what is happening in the country. And so the little you already take a stealing from the people, the one that you supposed to also give, you are not giving. And so the district assemblies are suffering. And we've talked about this and talk about this and talk about this several times in parliament. If parliament is really the parliament of Ghana, we should be talking for the people of Ghana. But we are talking. And some people some people are not listening. Some people are not they are just determined not to listen to us. That's why for the past one month or so. All of us, the minority, have been talking about the district assembly because it is making our work, even as MPs, difficult. Okay. Because our people, the development that is supposed to go through our assemblies and our constituencies, are not being done, mm. and as so the pressure is on MPs. If there's a road that's supposed to be maintained, it's not being maintained, and then you, the MP, is suffering for it. All the things that are supposed to be done by the assemblies are not being done. And the pressure is rather being put on MPs. So the difficulty we are having is that the MPs are now taking up the responsibility for local development. Okay. We have become agents of development when we are not supposed to be. Because the assemblies are incapacitated. Yes, the assemblies are incapacitated. So that job is being put on the head of MPs. So me, the MP now is supposed to provide a school, health facility do this that's why recently you see some of our mps providing cheap compounds providing this hmm. and all that do you know what we do we go to take loans from gap from bank sometimes people don't know some of the mps because they cannot just sit down and i look on the on the deprivation of their people in health in education do not mind going to bank to take loan to provide those things and use their ex gratia as guarantee. So the ex gratia you people talk about and insult MPs for, close to 80% of MPs, by the time their term ends, have no money. Because the money is so Because they have borrowed loans, they've taken loans from the bank to do all these cheap compounds, uh, school blocks, and all those things to provide for their people. I'm telling you this. So if the person is not careful, and the person go to lose 
his primaries. That's all. That's the end of the person. He becomes so deprived as a former MP. People don't know. There are things we are not say we are not saying. But I'm telling you the truth. There are some MPs, by the time they finish their term, all that is left for them to get as S Gracia is about 60,000 60, cities. Some people go into negative. I'm telling you, because the, 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 the banks will deduct the loan from the S Gracia. If by that time you are not be able to pay the loan you take in, it will deduct from your S Gracia. Some MPs, have you heard the case of some MPs even losing their vehicles at the end of their term? Mm. Court seizing their vehicles because they borrowed money from the bank to do some of these projects because the assemblies have been incapacitated, the assemblies couldn't, couldn't provide those emergency needs. Assuming it has rained and it's blown off the roof of a community, a whole community. I've seen still a whole community get. No. Recently, like what happened in the Volta region, in Keta yeah. and other parts, do you think uh, MPs, Jifa uh, 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 Blagumasi, Honorable Sepe, and the rest yeah. should sit down and just wait on assembly? Even, even uh, what do you call it? Relief items the assembly couldn't provide, government couldn't provide. It has to take John Mahama and other philanthropists to provide relief items to the people. So, assuming the whole school block was blown off. As MP, Jifa Gumashi will sit down and wait until government come. If she says like, government is not coming, for the sake of the children, of the people who voted for him, for her, she go to the bank and borrow money, and who roof the school building. Where would that money be paid from? Her S. Garcia. People don't know. People insult us for taking S. Garcia. But let me tell you, 90% of us virtually use that money to invest in our communities and our constituencies. It's a cycle we've been going through a cycle. Tell me how many MPs have you seen after their term of office? Live good. Mm -hmm. Except those who got opportunity to be ministers and possibly had other benefits more from what they get in parliament majority of the MPs cut across NDC, MPP. Both sides. Both sides. They leave Parliament and become destitutes. I've seen it. I've lived it. Some of them virtually have to depend on the current Parliament to even pay their medical bills. If they, are, if they belong to a majority, they always go to the majority caucus and get money to pay the hospital bills. If they belong to a minority, the same. Some of them lose their, their houses. Some of them lose their houses. They cannot, they, 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 they cannot do anything because they've used their houses as, uh, as collateral to take loans from the bank in order to embark upon projects in their consequences. And so when they lose, then it becomes a problem how they should pay. Okay. And if they cannot pay, they lose their houses. It's happened so many times. Okay. It's a difficult situation. The way this government is subjecting all of us, pushing everybody into the poverty cycle, very soon, every Ghanaian will become a beggar on the street. And you may not get anybody to put a coin in your bowl. So we shall have more armed robbers, we shall have more pilferers, we shall have more thieves, and we shall have, have more difficulties. If this continues. So anyway, this continues. Uh, I'll, I'll come to you on this issue of the uh, sports to land. Uh, but before I do that, let me just uh, read a story. There's a story about Oliver Bakker uh today. Uh, the story that's breaking for some time on Bakker granted bail. And it says that the Tema High Court has granted hashtag fix the country convener Oliver Bakker a 2 million Ghana cities bail in the case of treason felony brought against him. The bail term is also supposed to be accompanied with two shorties one of whom must submit documents of landed property to the court justified that that thing that's it this comes after his lawyers filed an application to the high court following his arrest on february 11 2022 uh, so that is it so two million bills set at two million two shorties one to be justified so 
That's the team. That's so fantastic. I'm afraid, I'm afraid you don't want to give me a beer. Yeah, that's fantastic. You mean I have to find somebody who you have to ask someone who has proof of team <laughs> in other cities <laughs> in terms of landed property. That's serious. <laughs> anyway, that's only about back of our situation. Ah, we thank God for his life. Yeah, I I wish that uh, he will go through. You have a fair justice, mm. and uh, he will come out of this case or skate and also continue his agitation because I believe, I believe in whatever he is agitated. I believe in fixing the country. Mm. I believe in everybody concerned about the situation of this country. And I support the people who are agitating mm. for government and for all of us who find ourselves in order to fix the country. Because this country needs to be fixed. This country is broken too many in too many parts. It's broken. In fact, we don't have limbs anymore. And we need the government to fix our limbs so that we can walk again. Mm. And talking about fixing limbs, uh, I don't know, no stadium. In fact, uh, there's a video of Daniel Amokachi, mm. <laughs> who was basically <laughs> <laughs> laughing, us, laughing at us for our inability to provide a stadium for a home match. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, he's a funny boy. That Mukachi is a funny boy. You know, he's my very good friend. You know, you know, we used to play football. With the retired footballers of Ghana and the retired footballers of Nigeria we okay. meet t twice every year mm -hmm. during our independence and during their independence. COVID has made it impossible for us to play for the past two years. Okay. And he's a funny boy. He always make you happy, and and I like him so much. I take what he said as a joke. You know, this same boy <laughs> in 92, Senegal, I believe, I, when we beat them, I said, Oh, Ghana, man, you spoil man's party. They've been promised some huge <laughs> sums of money if you win them. And the one we win them, he said, Oh, Ghana, man, you spoil man's party. So he's a funny guy. I don't want to think what he says here. But it's also a serious issue. But it's a serious issue. It is. Um, you see, sometimes, as I said, this government will not listen to people they think they are so intelligent they are so clever and they know everything when some of us were criticizing the government for the decision that is taken to celebrate the independence anniversary at cape coast we were said to be doing politics partisan politics but we know the effect that will have on the pitch Look, as I speak today, something even coming up. Over this weekend, the Ghana Boxing Authority has an agreement to IMAX Media for a boxing league every two weeks at the boxing arena. Just this week, the president of the Ghana Boxing Authority was called and told that they should suspend their this week's fights because fancy got them. Is going to use the place for a musical concert. Was the arena built for musical concerts? At any point in time, the priority should be boxing. So if you have boxing coming up and somebody wants to perform a musical concert there, tell the person to find another date or you should go and look for another place. The place is primarily for boxing. The stadium was primarily built for football. So if you cannot have any place to celebrate the independence anniversary and you want to use the place, protect the facility. I had the most cherished uh, opportunity of working at the Old Trafford, mm. the Manchester United Theatre of Dreams, okay. for two years. You and worked at the Old Trafford yes, for years? Yes, I was a janitor there. And I've seen the stadium being used for other activity, but always the field is protected. Okay. There was a time it was used for a rugby match. As soon as they finished the rugby match, the next day they started laying a new grass because the rugby match affected the turf. That was even sports. You have used it for independence parade. The soldiers were walking on the green grass with their boots. The grass would die, and the sheer number of people on the field that day okay. was not twenty-two yeah. people on the field. So the effect on the grass will have been... And you know, you see, the, 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 the most annoying part of the whole thing is that 
You know we have World Cup qualifying match coming up in just about two weeks' time. So could you have, couldn't you have found any other venue to do the independence parade? And so if FIFA and CAF have taken this decision, we deserve it. Hmm. We deserve it. And I don't want to blame but is it definite, FIFA. Yes. And I don't want to blame anybody. If you are unable to get the pitch into shape, know that for the rest of all your matches, you have to find another pitch. Accra Sports Stadium is worse. Tamale is bad. Kumasi that they say is the next distance is not also fit for purpose as of now. Because there is a standard you must meet. It's because people are not thinking. People are not planning. Because if I were in the saddle, I will go straight to my president and tell Mr. Mr. President, I'm sorry because of this World Cup, Cup coming, uh, World Cup qualifier coming up. You cannot use the Cape Coast Stadium. I will go after the president. I will tell the chief of staff. I will tell the state protocol. I will tell those planning the activity. You cannot use the pitch. And I will tell the president the reason why you cannot use it. I'm not insulting my president. I'm only doing my work as a minister. I'm telling the truth that we have a World Cup match coming up in two weeks' time. Mr. President, if we don't have what it takes to maintain the pitch, we cannot use the pitch. Because when we use the pitch, we don't have an alternative. We may end up playing our home match away. And that will be more expensive. Just simple. If the president thinks, he will say, well, that's fine. Let's look at it again. Can we have an alternative place for this? He will call the people involved and say, well, if we still want to hold it in Central Region, which other venue is possible? Is the Jubilee Park okay? Because the significance of the independence anniversary is not how large the venue for the hosting of the anniversary parade is. Mm -hmm. It's about what constitutes the parade. You understand? It's what constitutes the parade. If that's the case, the one we hold at the district level, why, why do we do it? Why do we do it? Recently, there was a president who cancelled the country's independence parade for close to five years. Did that country cease to exist on the map? No. Mm. So, what is it? So the we want to have the independence parade in Cape Coast. Okay. We have a World Cup qualifying match coming up in two weeks. When we do the parade, it will affect the park. So instead of Central Region, we are moving to Western Region. So and next year we can come back to Central Region. It's an alternative. People must think. But nobody was thinking in this government. So they allowed it to go. And today. All of us will have to suffer the consequences of their unfortunate and irresponsible action. So what we face currently to you is purely a leadership failure. Leadership failure. And that has been the bane of this government. But what, what does that mean to us? Because if we are having to play a home game away from something. Ghana... We, we, we... Let me tell you something. When I was Minister for Sports... Mm. There was a time the Blasters have already qualified for the Cup of Nations. And we were supposed to play a match. We were playing, I think it was Rwanda we were playing. Mm -hmm. We didn't have money. Because that time we were even struggling to find money for our fiscally dis dis um, disabled people to compete in their Paralympics. We were struggling to have money for the national volleyball team to play an Olympic qualifier. And we're going to spend close to five hundred thousand dollars on a blaster match okay. for which we have already qualified okay. so i took the decision with my my deputy and the management that look instead of spending all this money to bring the foreign players home pay plane ticket because plane ticket or uh, cost us almost about three hundred thousand dollars why don't we use local players and then we can spend the rest of the money on the other sporting disciplines that have emergency 
programs. I had a bash with the GFA. They said, no, they were agree. I don't know. I just went to my president. President Mama listened to me. I said, they go ahead. They go ahead. So we went ahead. The GFA said they were agree. They asked the players to buy their own ticket. The players bought their own ticket. They came and played. And they played a draw. Nobody came to me to ask for refund of their tickets because there was no way they were going to get it. And Nagami did not pay. There are times when, as a minister, when something falls within your sector, you must think for the general good. Okay. Sit down with your president, mm -hmm. sit down with the government, discuss it, and then think about what is in the best interest of the nation. Not what will satisfy yourself and selfish, capricious interest. Okay. And that's what this was. You've been, insult, you've been insulting President John Dramani, my mother, he was incompetent. But the incompetent man built a stadium that you went to celebrate the independence anniversary. And you ended up spoiling the theft. And now we cannot play World Cup qualifier. Then what, what happens? What happens? What happens? Because <laughs> today, the infrastructure we have, the sports infrastructure we have, has become so useless. Yeah, and that was where I was coming from. Accra Sports Stadium. We did a Sipong. We did a, what do they call it? Um, uh, there's a, a Kumasi Babayara. And then there were, we, after all that. All the infrastructure have that. They are down. How is that possible? How that possible? Lack of maintenance. As a result of lack of proper leadership. So, now. And you see, the annoying part of it is that and we are still wasting money look we are wasting money building what i call recreational grounds people are so happy we are building astroturf what useless astroturf are we building what useless astroturf are we building i called one of the best contractors for the astroturf i said look why are you building an astroturf which we cannot use for the development of football because what you are building cannot develop football. It can't. We are building an astroturf for people to have play leisure game. To enjoy themselves. Seven aside, nine aside. Today the blasters cannot have even train on any of these astroturfs we have built. Assuming they are in here, they have to train. They can't train on even one. The only one that they can train on effectively, Thema Sports Stadium. Which is of standard that until the astroturf is gone, and that was laid during President Kufuor's time, when we hosted the Cup of Nations. It's gone. So that even that needs a maintenance. So all these useless the places we are building, why don't we invest that money in maintaining the surfaces of the ones we have? Or you are built, you are built one. In Botan only shaman from you built one in Sukura. You built one in Madina. Why didn't you put the monies together to build one good astroturf based sports stadium that can take about twenty thousand people? Complete stadium with uh, 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 astroturf tracks around it. Why? And you are building these things around. And people are happy. It's become political freebies. People are using to buy votes. Everybody, every MP is so anxious, as I said, are you not thinking? If I had the money, instead of putting up what they are, the useless thing they put in book home, I've left you use that money to develop a real standard pitch. Where all the schools in my constituency can do an athletics competition and play football. And we shall play in 11 11. In fact, a class of folk at Great Olympic School rent. Use it for their match. Yes, I would have used that money to construct, use to develop the fire service pitch. Okay. The fire service pitch. 
It's a full standard pitch. I will have developed the, the stadium. stadium there. Yes, at their training school. Oh, it's a standard pitch. Yes. Olympics train there. We could have built it into a stadium, a full flesh stadium, with athletic over around it. And fire service school, you have access to it. The security service school, you have access to it. Or I could have even used to develop a work. The monies, the three, the monies we spent on three of these, we could use it to develop a work. A work could have been a substitute for a class sports stadium. It has always been. A class of have played cup, club championships there before. The Blasters have played a match there before. Common sense. Common sense. That's what we are lacking. Well, oh no, get us to land. Just let, let's maybe as a, the sports journalist in you, and as a, uh, somebody who was in that position, can we provide a pitch in time to be able to satisfy CAF for us to play a home game here? And if we don't, <laughs> are we risking <laughs> losing the game? We are playing the game next week. Oh, then we are. <laughs> And then if we play that way, are we risking losing the game? You see, when you play at home, there are so many things that work for you. Even though it's not automatic that you win when you play at home. But it works for you. At least the crowd mm. is enough to give the players that impetus and the motivation to do a little more extra. That is what is good. And, and, and so, playing your home match away does not give you any advantage. Mm. In fact, if you go if you're going to play in Benin, it gives Nigeria more advantage than Ghana. Because let me be frank with you, thirty percent of Beninwans are Nigerians. Thirty percent of the people in Benin. Yes. Yeah. It's like Ghana and Togo. Assuming the match you didn't play in Togo, it gives Ghana advantage. Okay. You understand? Because thirty percent of the people who come and win the match <laughs> will transport themselves from Aflao, Jalukope, Ekita and they're just moving. Yes, they just move in and support us. That's a, that's the advantage you get. So if you are playing Benin, it, it's, it's it's so easy for Nigerians to cross the, the border and enter. In fact, so people can walk and enter Benin and play the and support their team to play the match. That's that's the difficulty we have. And so I I don't know, but I'm hearing they are looking at Kumasi. Okay. I remember I faced a critical situation like that when we were playing Uganda. Okay. And that same time, problem Kikos, with Kikos was not ready. Okay. And the same problem with pitches. A crowd was bad. We couldn't do it in Kumase for one reason or the other. Immediately, I have to dispatch the green grass technology people. A month ahead to go to Tamale and work on Tamale. When we got to Tamale, it was a bit dry. So, dry season. So, we've had some difficulty. There was no water. I have to hire tankers to supply water to get. That this thing we have to pay Ghana Water and Sewage Company for them to reconnect the stadium with water so that green grass across people cool. And we had a, a good pitch and we played the match there. So, all this, well, I don't know what they were doing. If you knew you were going to use Cape Coast and somebody was thinking and knowing that it will have an effect on Cape Coast, if Kumasi or Tamale were bad, immediately the green grass across people should have been sent to Kumasi and Tamale. To work on the pitches to see which one will be a better alternative. Nothing was done. It is now we are grappling in the dark. It's a serious thing, mm -hmm. and hurts must roll. Some people must take the the punishment for it. Who should? Well, if we have leadership in the country, why not? They must bear the card. Because you're talking about, I think uh, the National Sports Council has been mentioned. The I'm minister sure the minister of, minister of Sports may have protested. Knowing who he is, I'm sure he will have protested, but nobody should have, may have listened to him. Yeah, but at the end of the day, the blame will still be on his neck. Yes, it's unfortunate. His name will be mentioned. It's unfortunate that Mustafa will have the one, should be the one to take the blame. I, 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 I feel sad for him, but then. <laughs> There's nothing he can do about it. He will suffer the blame. He will take responsibility for it. Up to now, uh, the, here the squad has not even been announced. Uh, the squad could be announced even the day before the match. There's no Is the Black Stars in shape to even win this match? I don't know. For all that I know, 
is that our players are not in. You know, by FIFA regulation, you have between 10 days and 14 days to invite the players. So, <laughs> well, I, I... You want to see the quality of the team that will be... Yes, I, I think that for all I know, I don't think there will be any drastic change from the team that played in the Cup of Nations. Because what time would a coach have to have new players and test them? What okay. time will he have? Uh, so I don't think there will be any drastic change from the team that played in the Cup of Nations. I don't think so. Anyone not was impressive, that team. Can that team beat the Nigerian team that we saw? The Nigerians themselves were not too impressive at the Cup of Nations. Okay. Apart from their first two games. So it's, it's a match of equal opportunities. Okay. It's the team that organizes itself well. That way. And the team with much more fire in their belly will win this match. And I could see us possibly fighting hard because we need to qualify for the uh, uh, World Cup at all costs. Okay. Uh, from our performance at the Cup of Nations, if we don't qualify for the World Cup, it will be too damaging. Okay. And so I see us doing everything we can. But Nigerians could also be more determined because they also need to qualify for the World Cup. Because people had a lot of hope in them for the Cup of Nations. So for they also did not perform the way they should have performed. And so, uh, I, I, you see, the difficulty I have now, Nigeria already have a technical team in place. Mm -hmm. And the good thing for their technical team is that they have some of these, all their old players together, trying to help Aguavon to succeed. Mm -hmm. Joseph Yobo, Amokachi, and all those who are there trying to help him to succeed. With us, we don't even seem to have a team, a technical team in place now. And I don't know what sort of this thing have been put in place for Otoado. Okay. So uh, it makes it difficult for me. Um, let me also consider the fact that a lot of our players after the Cup of Nations are playing quite well mm -hmm. in their respective teams. We've seen improvement. I've seen improvement. Of, yeah. For example, Amante has been fantastic for Leicester, mm -hmm. even though they lost last time. Pate has improved tremendously. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, Jiku to the last two matches playing so well in his team. I just hope that they will be able to transfer the same performance at their respective clubs to the national team. But you see, playing your club is different from playing at the national team. The club plays to a particular system. And all these teams they are playing don't have the same system. Okay. The system being played at Leicester is different from the system being played by Pate in Arsenal. Mm -hmm. It's also different from the system being played by the Andre Ayo and the De Ayo in their respective clubs. Okay. It's different from the system being played by Jiku in his club. So it's how you are able to weave the various systems together when you bring them to the national team that helps. With Nigeria, the diff the, the, the this thing I have with Nigeria is that all like us. When our players prior the Cup of Nations were not performing well in their respective teams. Now, the Nigerian players who were performing well in their team before the Cup of Nations, they are now not performing well in their teams. But I still will not dismiss them. Because there's one player I've watched recently who did not perform too well at the Cup of Nations, mm. but playing superbly with his club, especially in the, in the European uh, Club Championship. Chukweze. Okay. Playing wonderful, wonderfully well. I'm also beginning to see a lot of these Nigerian players who did not come for the Cup of Nations deciding to play in this World Cup qualifying, like Osimen and others. And that could be a problem for us. Okay. That could be. A, because under normal circumstances, if they should really be able to assemble all their stars, so we them, with the experience they have, they could trouble us. Yeah. Especially at this time when we are suffering from a goalkeeper disease. Are we suffering from a goalkeeper disease? Yes, of course. Or we're making a selection that will not help <laughs> us. Because I also feel that there are other alternatives <laughs> that we are really not considering. But, but, but Honorable, um, we also have a, a new technical team in place. Mm. Um, you said is the ability to weave all these players yeah. together.
and play them. And then you talk about fighting spirits. Yeah. Uh, can the you see team? The Tenka team do not have enough time at their disposal. To be able to make any difference. Because you see, in building a team, it takes time. That's why I said that. In choosing a coach and a Tenka director mm -hmm. for the future, mm -hmm. we should be mindful of what our set goals and objectives are. Okay. What do we want to achieve? Okay. Is it qualifying for the World Cup? Or we want to have a team that will be projected into the future, the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. That's what we should be thinking about. We should have a set goals, and the set goals will determine who you choose. Mm -hmm. And the person you choose, depending on your set goals and objectives and vision, will also the sort of players he has to assemble to achieve that goal. Okay. But you can't change the technical team, change the the, the players within this short term, and uh, expect to win, and to expect to have a result. It's not. It's not easy. It's not that and that. Football is not. Uh, and if, even in athletics, you could be doing ten point one. It may take you a year before you can break into the nine seconds barrier, depending on the the the, the sort of training you do, depending on the the sort of style you run, and it's not something you can change all of a sudden. Okay, it takes work. It takes a lot of work. And time. And you must have somebody with the eye. To be able to say that, look, when you spend too much energy off the blocks, mm -hmm. so it depending on how you use your upper body. So you, can you change and do this and do this? That was what was done for someone like Usain Bolt, and he will tell you that it took about two years to develop him. You understand? So. His first 50 meters may not be as dangerous as the last 50 meters. Mm -hmm. It's a style. Somebody could also explode from the blocks. And his first 70 meters is like a Sputnik. But his last 30 meters may be a problem. So depending on your style, your, your metaf metaphysical being and everything, then your coach and your trainer can develop you to fit a particular running regime. Okay. I remember when I started running, I, 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 I had the stamina to do middle distance, 800,005. But my coach called me and said, look, the sort of legs you have, you cannot be endurable for that middle distance. So come to the short distances. So took me to 400, 200, 100 meters, and then the jumps. And I felt better. So it's all... In sports, it's, it's a science, and, and you need to sit down and critically diagnose what you want to do and how you should do it. You can't just get up and put people together and ask, expect to achieve result. It's never done. You can never, never achieve result if you do things haphazardly in sports. Is that to say we won't achieve the result? If we continue with the way are, we are going, we will not be able to achieve the result we are looking for. Hmm. We can't. It can take us to a particular point, but going beyond that point will be difficult. Okay. Well, honorable, uh, we have to bring this to a close. But thank you so go, much. Before you go, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, one. Uh, Veronica Tillman was there, and I'm pleased as honorable to say something about the COVID test at the airport. We are worried. Uh, there is also Commander Daniel, my leader, honorable Arudusu, has said a lot about it even yesterday. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we even wanted to touch on more principally yesterday was the continuous closure of the borders okay it's not it's not it's, it, it doesn't, doesn't make happen. sense oh. it doesn't make sense in any way to continue closing the borders and say you are fighting COVID. Ah, today i'm seeing government officials walking around without uh, nose marks and the rest eh? And independence, this thing in Cape Coast, what do you we see? So why are you still having the borders closed? You are killing people's businesses. You are killing families by keeping the borders shut. Mm. The air borders are open, but our land borders are shut. In fact, do they know the number of people who even use our maritime borders to enter Ghana? Do you know how many canoes go beyond our shores into Côte d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and come back. 
You don't know. They don't even know. Some of our fishermen spend days and weeks in other countries before they come here. I know fishermen who go as far as Benin to fish. So, keeping the land borders closed up to today doesn't make sense at all. It doesn't make sense at all. And I'm yet to be convinced why a government that cares about the people will still want to keep our borders closed. Possibly put in, if you are still concerned about people coming in to spread the, 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 the COVID, test them. Let the person prove tests negative test of vaccination putting all the mechanisms you put at the various borders also at the land borders and check don't we check passport at the land borders they do so why can't we also check a covid vaccination are you concerned about what is happening at the airport i am i am but i'm saying i'm not concerned too much about that because these are people who can afford $150 is a lot. It's a lot of money. That's what I'm saying that if we people can't afford, they will have joined us to be talking about this by now. Why should it be the only the minority who should be talking about this all the time? Why should it be the minority who should be talking about it all the time? All Ghanaians who are being affected by it should talk about it. How many of us? You see, if, gov if people continue to think that it's only a group of people who can talk about the ills of this government, then we have a problem. Why are the churches quiet? Hmm. Why are the CSO quiet? Why are other people quiet? All the voices in this country, why are they quiet? And they believe that only the 137 of us should we be talking about these things? No. In, in all jurisdictions, it has taken the collective voice of the people to demand right things are done by their governments. Okay. Ghanaians might rise up. Why should it be only the minority to be talking about it in parliament? Why should it only be the NDC people to go on the streets? To agitate? Why should it be? Why should it only be the fix fix the country people to be agitating? Every Ghanaian who is concerned about the situation in this country must add his voice to the cry, must put his hand to the wheel, must also open his mouth and criticize and talk. It shouldn't be only the few journalists like you. John Hughes and Mugabe and the rest, or Hineba, who are talking, uh, everybody must talk. The churches are supposed to be, if you look at all the prophets that have come, the prophets have, the prophets have spoken for the people. Some of the prophets were killed because they were speaking for the people, for the voiceless. So, the churches must speak. We must all speak. Religious bodies must speak. Our imams must speak. They shouldn't wait for the chief imam to speak all the time. They must also speak. Because 30% of our population are people from that faith. And if the 30% of those who are suffering, then they must speak for the 30%. So the Christians will also speak for the rest of the population. Our traditional authorities must speak. Our chiefs must speak. This land belongs to them. Because the land belongs to the people. And the chiefs are the custodians of those lands in trust of the people. So if chiefs are sitting down and their waters are being polluted, their environment is being denigrated and they will speak and they are waiting for me Neil and, Te, and the minority in parliament to speak then they are not living up to our expectation hmm. 
Well, let me uh, thank you for coming. Uh, just that I wanted to end with, but I've lost that message. It's very, very interesting message. I think it was referring to what happened ahead of the con uh, elections when the president went to announce that they should vote for you, and then his attention was drawn, and then he shouted, Oh, man, can you hear? Cry? Oh, no, no, you when you listen to that, uh, you after the abundance of the heart proceeded out of the mouth. So, you believe that he actually wanted you to be the one? Yes. Hey. President Kufadu has known me for a long time, he's been my friend. But I'll criticize him when I have to criticize him. He's been a friend of my father. His father has been a friend of my grandfather. He's known me for long. And he knows I'm a better person to be the MP of Odoyedo than his candidate. So God asked him to do what he God wanted to do. And that's what he did. Nobody should blame him. He was a messenger of God. He was just, at that time, he was just a messenger of God. <laughs> because I was under siege. And the really? best person God has ordained. I thought he was the only under people. siege. Well, well, and so God wanted to use he himself to take me out of that siege. God didn't want the wrong person for the people of Odododio. <laughs> so God used Akufuado to pronounce his judgment on the elections in Odododio. I believe my opponent's own mother knows that I'm better than him. And for fanatical reasons, people will not come out to say it. Then people put themselves know that I'm a thousand times better than their candidate. But they couldn't say it. So it took Akufuado to say it for their hearing. <laughs> in fact, he was my campaign manager in chief that day. It helped you very much. Yes. Last week, I was with him at the funeral in Tema. And he called me. I went to greet him. And when I was leaving, I just said politely, thank you very much, my campaign manager. I only went to one of the members of parliament for the DOD, of course. Uh, uh, if we were at school, you would have been an alumni of Radio Gold. Oh, yes. Yes. And I'm happy. Mm. And I've told you already, I, when we start full programs, I'm developing a program and I will continually host that program. Okay. I will not I will not throw away my love for this one I will not be earning salary, so there won't be the need for me to seek permission of parliament. I'll just be doing a program here continually to see how best we can help Radio Gold to be the top once again. Mm. Uh, we need to regain that position and I want to commend all of you, people like you, Eric Boatin, uh, and all Nancy and all the folks, Tanko. I saw, just saw Tanko and I was yes. so happy. Mm. I was so happy. All the guys who have stayed glued, in spite of the difficulties, you people, God bless you. God bless you so, so much. Yeah. And I know God has a reward waiting for all of you to have stayed truthful to what you believe in and what you, 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 what the, 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 the family you belong to. Many, many could not stand the difficulties, the challenges that came with the closure and have left. Um, it's for good reason. Sometimes the trees say, You baby, a co baby. But I don't blame them. It's my hope and prayer that some of them will come back so that we can grow this child together. It was a temporary. Uh, setback, mm. and I want all of us. I believe that Suini, James Ajini Mbwatin, Obobia, all of us who have found ourselves in other places will look at how best we can come back, contribute in one way or the other to re establish the agenda of Radio Good and to get Radio Good back to the level it was, and also as a pay setter in private broadcasting mm -hmm. and also the top of all radio uh, stations in the country. We, we, I'm committed to that and I'm sure my colleagues will come back, all of us will look at it. There are other, I was, it will surprise you to know that I've already gotten calls from presenters and radio personalities from other places in other regions who are interested in joining the new Radio Good trade to be able to help agenda 
I want to commend all of you. Uh, it's been difficult. Some of you, some of you have lived for close to how many years now? Over two close years? to three years. Close to three years. Yeah, no, third year. Without salary, without allowance. It is only God who have survived you all this well. And uh, I thank your family, your wives and your children for not losing faith in you. I don't know how many of you, your marriages have gotten destroyed as a result of this, or your families have been dislocated as a result of this. But in all things, I thank God for his mercies. I thank God for his favor that you are back. I will take this opportunity to ask people who love good broadcasting, people who think that Radio really Good has what it takes to be able to shape the destiny of this country, to look at how they can all support in getting Radio back, especially companies, institutions, and things who do a lot of advertising to bring their uh, advert, uh, adverts and their products to this place so that we can give them the sort of mileage they are looking for and also help us to be on our feet again. Mm. And that's fear. It is my prayer to God Almighty that what happened in the past two years should never happen again. There won't be any time for any radio station to be closed down, for anybody in a radio station to be intimidated, to be arrested, to be persecuted, and possibly jailed. But in that vein, I believe all of us to also know that press freedom has its own responsibilities. Okay. And as such, we should always be we should we should be we should be meticulous mm -hmm. in making sure that we respect the ethics and also we are responsible in our pronouncements on that note i say akwaba to radio good thank you ojeko radio good nyeba ken nukome won hile ye kanje nyo nyeba tash nyeba hianshi nye shulia panfe pan nya agbla e ba shwe nya hie kanje jebue ni je enu no kanye ye ko nyenu e ni konje na ajonye ni fe mi mo mo e fo manye ni ya yiro futa ni ba ga ma shi kono nye yo ga me ba wa nye ni no fe ni a fe e fo manye jo ma fe nye no shire ma fe nye no hin ya fe nye no shade papa a fe nye no mata fe mata ni baba a ke ba fe ni tumo yehova Amen. Yeah. God bless you all. Thank you.